great truths about growing old. Am I supposed to say something? Growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. Forget the health food. I need all the preservatives I can get. When you fall down, you'll wonder what else you can do while you're down there. You're getting old when you get the same, same sensation from a rocking chair that you once got from a roller coaster. <laughs> it's frustrating when you have all the answers, but nobody bothers to ask you the questions. <laughs> Time may be a great healer, but it's a lousy beautician. <laughs> Wisdom comes with age. But sometimes, sometimes age comes alone. Okay, let's get, get to the word. Ephesians chapter 6. I would think that all of you know exactly where that is in your Bible by now. Ephesians chapter 6. This is the fourth and final week of Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. How many of you have felt like you have fought a battle like that this week? Oh, here and here. Yeah. So I've shared with you for the last few weeks concerning the armor of God. And I told you in this series that Paul wanted to give us a way to make life easier as we face the battles that we face. I didn't say Paul said to take the battles away but to make them easier as we go through them. The battles we face are real. And the key to success is putting the tools that you have, which is the armor of God that we've talked about for the last few weeks, into action. So Paul says here in verse 10, Finally, brethren, be strong. Paul reminds them that it's only by the strength of God that we can see victory in our lives. To be strong in the Lord. And we must rely on Him and His promises that He gives us in His Word. Paul's told us several times to be strong in the Lord. And part of that, I believe, is just for us to not allow every little thing that comes our way to get us down. I've watched as people, it seems like something just very insignificant will bring people down, get them discouraged. But one thing that we have to keep in mind, what might be your battle is not the person's next to you battle. What might be big in your life may not be big in somebody else's life. But in the context of Ephesians chapter 6, this scripture has to do with spiritual battles. And I want us to look at that for just a moment. Your battle may be as a result of a relationship. Having a hard time just playing old-fashioned, getting along. Somebody else's battle might be having a tough time making decisions, just the basic decisions concerning life. <coughs> Another one that is difficult for many people is just the simple thing of finances. In these, you have some hard choices. You're going to run away from them. Easy. Yeah, I think they're the staples easy button. Run away and hit the button. 
Or you can stand and face them. For most people, that's very difficult to do. But Paul says, be strong. Be strong. In other words, make the right choice. Choose, whether it's hard or easy. Make the choice that God wants you to make. A friend of mine has struggled for most of his, most of the time that I've known him, and I've known him since a little kid. And his big struggles have been with the law. You know the old saying, I fought the law and the law. <laughs> That's true in his life. But the last three or four years of his life, he's been serving God and working on doing what's right in his life. Is he perfect? No. Nope. I don't know any of us here that are. But one day he came to me and he's, he's getting very discouraged with things that were going on in his life. And I reminded him of this how far he had came. You know, the discouragement comes from Satan. Mm -hmm. It is one of the biggest battles that we face. So when you encourage someone through their discouragement, you are helping them to fight their battles. The battle that he's been going through has been tough, but to look ahead and see it's just a short way to go before all of that's behind him. Yes, a battle, but victory is so close. This person could fit any number of people that you know. Another individual I've known for many years battles with a lack of self-worth. You can encourage him, you can be there for him. You can do whatever you can for them. But he still has a problem with his self-worth. A very real battle. A very difficult battle. Some of you may face that yourselves. Again, this person could fit any number of people that you know. But remember, a piece of our armor is the sword of the... Spirit, which is the Word of God. And that Word of God is life-changing. And I want to encourage you once again this week, get into the Word of God, study the Word of God. <coughs> Find out what God has for you in His Word. And then you can use that sword. I just looked around for my sword again this morning. <laughs> then you can use that sword. Now, I wasn't talking about this one, but the one I had last week. The Word of God is the sword. I brought up last week how Jesus was tested. And I want us to look at that for just a moment this morning. Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. That's where we get the saying, the wilderness experience. Has anyone ever been through what we call the wilderness experience? Now, I'm sure you can all have a definition for what it is for you, but so many people, it's when they get out there and they just begin to get away from God. Or you just feel like God's not speaking to you. He's not hearing what you're saying. Jesus was led into the wilderness, and I, I think of the wilderness as a dry spell in your life. A time of testing in your life. Jesus was there for 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted during that time. Some of us if we fast one meal, or maybe I should just say skip one meal, we're famished. We have a hard time making it. Linda will tell you as soon as I've finished with breakfast, I'm talking about lunch. As soon as I'm finished with lunch, I'm talking about dinner. No dessert? Well, that too. You can come over. Come over. Bring dessert. You're vulnerable. 
when you're at that point of stress in your life, you're vulnerable. And so Satan took advantage of that and told Jesus to turn the stones into bread. And at your worst time, Satan will try to break you. When you're at your wit's end, Satan will try to break you. But Jesus stood his ground and answered him with this, It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the point here is this. He's using the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, to fight the devil. That's right. And every time that he's tested in this passage of scripture, you will find that he says, it is written. There's a word for everything in our life that we face. When you're going through anything, God speaks words into that situation. Someone put it like this, God's word is life-changing, devil-shattering. Mm -hmm. Life-changing, devil-shattering. Which goes back to the word I used last week, dunamis. Dunamis means the explosive, power-packed word of God. The wilderness is not a place to go and die. It's not a place to go and just quit moving and build a structure, build your home out there in the wilderness. No. But a place when you are there, you can see the power of God in action. Satan cannot stand the power-packed word of God, the power-packed word that came from the mouth of Jesus, and at the end of him tempting Jesus, Satan left him. You see, he faced the Word of God. In like manner, Satan cannot stand the power that lies in God's Word when you speak it. I want you to understand that. When you speak the Word of God in the situations in your life, take it directly from the Word of God, meaning exactly what it says for the situation that you're in, Satan must flee. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, for the word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. That word powerful here is, comes from that same word dunamis, explosive power, explosive word of God. Remember, the sword is part of our armor. And who is using that sword? Are any of us here using that sword? It's given to you by God to be used. <clears throat> and as you use it, you'll find it works. The catch is using it. Try me and see that I will do what I said. The scripture tells us to try it. Try his word. Put it into action in your life. Now, Jesus didn't go into the wilderness alone. He was led there by the Holy Spirit. You know what? He didn't complain. He didn't fuss about anything. He didn't, he didn't worry about what was going on, what he was going through. He prayed and spoke the word. You know what happens when we face trials sometimes? We start going through a trial. We forget all about the Word of God. We decide that we're going to handle whatever's facing us ourselves. Not consciously, but that's what we wind up doing. Use the Word of God. Someone here says, it will make you bitter, or it will make you better. Better. That's it. When you speak the word of God, it will make you better. In that dunamis, well, is that dunamis power active in your life? 
Romans chapter 8 it says that some power dwells in us, or that same power dwells in us, but is it active? You know, you can have something in your life, but until you put it to use, it really means nothing. I like having toast at night, but it's not going to do me any good to have a toaster if I don't put any bread in it. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> and you can take that illustration and take it and go through so many different things. It doesn't do you any good to have a car if you don't what? So it doesn't do you any good to have the sword of the spirits unless you do what? Open, use it. Use it. Hallelujah. Hey, you're good. You guys can come up here. Do you want it to be active in your life? Acts chapter 1a says this, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Sometimes, you know, we read things and it just goes like this, or you can be talking to somebody, and the person you're talking to, you know they're just not getting it. <laughs> now, but don't look over at Linda about me. You know. <laughs> you know, they're just not getting it. And this scripture, if it doesn't click with you, Acts chapter 1-8, go home and read it. <coughs> If it doesn't click, read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Don't let it just go here. Let it go right here. It says, you shall receive power, meaning here that the same power that raised Christ from the dead, think about it. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Again, the power is that dunamis, that dynamic, explosive power of God can be active in your life. Every time you hear that word, every time you think, hear that word dunamis, think God's dynamite power in your life. Divine's Bible Dictionary, some of you are not familiar with that at all, but it says it's the ability to make something happen. Knowing that same power is in us, maybe I should ask, sidetrack for just a moment, if any of us has anything in us that we need to get out of us, you know, some garbage in our lives, some things that are not pleasing to God. Do you want it gone in your life? Then use that power of God that is in you to see it gone. You have that same power in you, that dynamite power, allow God to work in you. Now for the last four weeks, I've shared with you about the armor of God and learning how to use it. Learning how to use that armor because <coughs> our fight, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 and 13, is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. It's against powers. It's against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And I want to tell you something. If you don't realize it as you look around in your life, you'll see that power active where you live. You'll see that power active in our government. I'm not supposed to talk about politics, but I tell you, think about it. That's as far as I'm going. And that's one thing about the where our government has gone. It has made it so that a pastor is not supposed to say anything about politics. That's the law. But that's our battle. We wrestle against principalities. We fight a spiritual warfare every day that you live. That's our battle. Happening on a daily basis. Our battles won't be won simply by shaking our finger 
at the problem. <coughs> it won't be done just by saying, oh, you just can't do that. It's my desire to see Christians once again living a life full of the dunamis power of God. Living a life full of the power-packed Word of God in their lives. Seeing things happening. Seeing things happening that God has done. Seeing miracles happening. Seeing God move in people's lives. And if we can only grasp the magnitude of His power and allow Him full reign in your life, How much more do you think we could accomplish or do for God if you allow Him to have full reign in your life? Remember Acts chapter 1 8, you shall receive power. Philippians 4 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I'm going to leave you with this. What do you want to see happening in your life? you want to see that in your life. Let's pray.